Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and in this episode we're going to be looking at Berlin by Jason Lutz, the hardcover edition. Yeah, let's get underway. Talking about Berlin is going to be pretty difficult for me, I'll warn you that, because I will risk in beginner up far too much to meet anyone's expectations so I'm going to try to restrain myself but Berlin by Jason Lutz is an amazing story that goes back in time to Berlin as Germany becomes a republic the Weimar Republic and it basically charts the time period in Germany's Republican days before the advent of Nazism in 1933 but before I get too far into the story let's look at the build of this book I have the hardcover edition it does come in individual trade paperbacks as well three of them and it comes in a paperback version of this omnibus all-in-one collected edition but this book is so beautifully crafted and created honestly it is one of the most pleasurable books to read that I've ever come across the paper quality is this old thick matte paper really good quality paper it's black and white throughout there's a splash of color now and again but not too much pretty much dominantly black and white and yeah it collects 600 pages of Berlin by Jason Lutz amazing bookend pages the map of Berlin Honestly, the production quality on this, the binding is just superb. It opens up and lays out flat. And because Jason Lutz uses a lot of open splash pages at various points of the story, and when the book opens up, all of the images just line up exactly as they were meant to be, no matter where you are in the book. And that, for me, is always a sign of a really good high quality book it's just great obviously so binding if it's this good a binding but yeah it's just a stunning book i think at every level berlin by jason lutz as i said in the beginning is a look back in time and jason lutz is looking back at the weimar republic in germany and the book opens up pretty much with a train journey and a chance meeting between two people Marta and Kurt. Kurt is a journalist and a writer. Marta is an artist, a struggling artist, trying to be an artist, but she's not quite sure what she wants to be as well. She's very young and naive in many respects, but very kind of honest and open, whereas Kurt is a bit older, he's a bit more weathered, a bit more jaded. And yeah, and it starts off in the summer of 1928. And it essentially covers a five-year period going forward to 1933 with, like I say, the advent of the domination of the Nazi party, really. That's not to say it doesn't go back, though, because it does go back to 1919 and the formation of the Republic. It does go back to the World War I as well, and it shows parts of that and it shows elements of that that had a direct impact on the forming of the Republic or the people in this book. But the chance meeting between these two is just an introduction and it's a great way of doing it. A train journey to Berlin. This girl martyr is coming from another town, coming in. Kurt is coming from a work assignment with his paper, coming into the town. And they both are making the journey into Berlin and you are kind of making that journey with them. And at once you're kind of struck by this really amazing black and white artwork loads of straight lines of streaming light coming into train stations and the dark smoke coming off the steam engines it's just a great way to bring you in as a reader and then before you know it the city just opens up when they come out of the train station and it introduces us to the place that we spend the vast majority of the book very little of the book apart from these world war one kind of extracts is set outside of the city the whole book is very much steeped in that city and the thing that struck me immediately about this book is that even though you have some kind of main characters it does allow itself to meander and wander off because it's very much trying to show life in berlin in this time period and it's showing how how open and artistic and interesting and cultural but how politically diverse and dangerous it was you literally pick up people on the streets like traffic wardens and people getting on the bus and things like that and it tells you what they're thinking and how you're feeling before it goes back to the main character story and it does that now and again and it's so well done it's really astoundingly well done because it doesn't seem jarring to you or anything or you don't get oh who's this person who's that person you kind of understand what he's going for and you kind of get it straight away that oh we're just visiting this guy for a, a panel or strip 
and then we leave that character and never hear from him again and then go back to these kind of main group of characters that we follow him because initially it does bounce off Kurt and Marta and so people that they meet and people they work with, people they're in university with, people they come in contact with in the street they then go off in different storylines as well and there's a gigantic cast of characters, a gigantic diverse range of characters as well as you imagine but it's amazing to watch like for example the political battles you know the communist and the national socialist party battles the left right and center and the battles spill out into the streets there's massacres and there's police being violent and there's loads of things like that going on so that's fascinating in and of itself really because you're following that story of a time where germany could have really gone either way and one political party just pipped the other to the post and then world war ii began but the other thing is you get a real sense of the Berlin is filled with post-war kind of depression, really. Not just financial depression and not just kind of pressure put on the country by, you know, the Treaty of Versailles and other things like that. But generally you get the idea that a vast majority of the public are suffering from PTSD and things like that and they're really suffering. So it shows these ex soldiers it shows the families that are affected by the, their their part in the First World War and it really does an amazing picture to show how damaged Berlin and therefore Germany is coming out of the First World War and how that First World War and the actions that happened there is just kind of rolled the dice on Berlin. It's fascinating seeing how the individual people live and survive and transverse the city and interact with each other but equally it's just fascinating to see that contradiction in Berlin, that kind of so open and amazing and vibrant culture juxtaposed right next to the most vile part of human culture as well and that's what Berlin does astoundingly well is it kind of shows everything quite neutrally and you make your own choices and you make your own kind of assumptions and so as we go forward the cast of characters widen out and widen out and widen out and it would be silly of me to really go into detail with all of them but needless to say not once do you kind of feel overwhelmed or intimidated or anything and at no point does any of these digressions in new characters feel off the pacing and the flow of the book is so good it's it's mind-blowing how good it is to be honest because you go from Martha and you go from these other characters that you know well and Kurt and things like that and a relationship that forms with that group of people and then you go off into these other people and before you know it you were fully invested and in going down the rabbit hole of their life for example there's a family of four which feature heavily in this book there's a mother a father a brother and a sister or oh, actually two sisters a younger sister as well at the beginning the mother gets kind of subtly put out of her factory work job and she starts having to look for other jobs but she feels more of an affinity and more of a side to the communist party and to the communist sensibilities that are rife in the city and so she generally kind of floats towards them but then her husband is very much on the national socialist nazi party side of things really and so there's this instant split and then without seeing it physically on the pages the mother just shows up and essentially the mother just leaves with two daughters and the father keeps the son and then these two family strands just go out and evolve in totally and utterly different ways and the emotional impact on the children and on the grown-ups and everything you feel it 100% because you stick with all the members of this family right the way through the end of the book and not one of them doesn't have a really engaging and intriguing and interesting story plot even the father for example you think oh, i'm gonna hate him because he's a nazi basically but then you see the way he takes care of his family and the way he prioritizes them and then it kind of almost brings a humanity to him which wouldn't be there if you just knew he was a nazi on the street so it brings in different dimensions to people and the mother and the daughter as well they get embroiled in the communist side of things and so you get those very intimate looks at two very dominant political powers and martha has a friend anna who identifies as a man in the book and she has an amazing story arc because again it ties into the whole idea of Berlin being the centre of kind of homosexuality at this point in Europe and the fact that that is another contradiction and confusing part of the history of Germany and things like that. One of the things I loved as well was how the characters were not heroic, 
were not, you know, overly adventurous and they weren't your typical comic book or novel characters and protagonists or antagonists or however you want to phrase it. They were just normal people that had been kind of put into this backdrop. They were just trying to go about their lives. Take Martha, for example. She's, you know, a 20-something student, but then she wanders around not knowing what she wants, who she wants, what her sexuality is, all of this type of stuff. And she can be quite frustrating in many ways. But then equally, when I'm reading, I'm thinking, well, what am I expecting from her? She's just a normal human being with all the kind of contradictions and problems that anyone in normal life has. And the same with Kurt. Kurt has writing blocks. He has troubles getting over his ex-girlfriend and loads of issues. All of these people are just normal people. But what Jason Lutz has done an exceptional job of, I think, is he's clearly researched his subject matter so well and the history of Berlin so well that he's kind of formed these characters the, are the basis of one section or one mindset or one type of person that was around in Berlin at that point. Don't get me wrong, he doesn't encapsulate them all, it, that'd be impossible, but the characters that he's created, these fictional characters, are kind of the embodiment of a certain section of society or a certain opinion that was prominent or even minority opinion that was around in Berlin. An astoundingly good read. The way it's written flows poetically and interestingly and engagingly. The way it's drawn is always clean cut, interesting, beautiful, never confusing to the eye whatsoever. He spent about 22 years making this book, Jason Lutz did, and it shows, it shows that it's care and time has been taken on every element. So if you pick up a book called Berlin and you know that the characters in it are fictionalised character, but the backdrop of Berlin is as realistic as you can get, to be honest. So it's these fictionalised characters wandering through Berlin in the 1930s and seeing how everything is going together and how the path to its future begins, really. If you pick up this book going into it, knowing that, this book delivers and then some. Honestly, it is one of the best graphic novels I've ever read without a shadow of a doubt. So yeah, I just jumped both feet in there and just kind of said it. But anyway, it gives you a wonderful cast of characters, gives you a few notes on some of the story points that may not have been too clear, gives you a list of the characters and shows a little picture of them next to it. And then he gives references and inspirations, gives further non-fiction reads, gives fiction reads, gives films, gives visual resources, all pages of them. So take this as a starting point to find out about German history and delve into the world of Berlin with Jason Lutz because you will not find it better drawn, better written, better paced, amazingly impactful story than Berlin. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one.